Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to dip our toe into the layers module of On One Photo Raw 2018. We're going to be doing a simple sky replacement. And this image is perfect for that. It's very evident that the sky is pretty much non-existent. And it's a very good image to replace a sky in. It's relatively simple. We have some high contrast edges. So it should be relatively easy to put a new sky in this image. And with some of the tools that are found in On One, it's super easy to replace a sky in this. So we're going to take this image. I did some very basic adjustments in the develop module. I did tone and color adjustments and I just did lens corrections. So I'm ready to send it over to the layers module. So I'm just going to go over to the right hand panel and click on layers. Now on one doesn't work on the raw file when you're in the layers module. What on one is doing right now is it's creating a PSD file. So all the work you're going to be doing will be done on the PSD file when you're in the layers module. And when you're done in the layers module and you go back to the browse module, you'll found you'll have you'll have two versions of this image. You'll have your original raw file and you'll have a PSD file. And the PSD file will be the image that will have the new sky in it. So we're opened up into the layers module and you can see on the right hand side we have our layers and they called this composite. That's fine. And over on the left hand side you'll see there's a couple folders. There's my extras and on one extras. And on one comes with a lot of great stuff to help you, you know, add textures, add borders, and add skies. So we're going to find the skies in on one by just simply double clicking on on one extras. And you can see backgrounds, borders, textures. So we're going to double click on backgrounds. And then you can see in backgrounds we have gradients, inside, outside, skies, studio backdrops, and walls. Of course, we want skies for this image. And you can see that there's a lot of different skies available in on one and my suggestion to you is whenever you replace a sky in an image keep three things in mind to make sure that it looks natural one is color temperature if your image is cool make sure you're using a cool sky or if your image is warm make sure you're using a warm sky if you have a cool image and you put a warm sky on it it just won't look right or vice versa the second thing is focal length. If you have a really wide angle shot, don't put a sky on it that looks like it was shot with a telephoto lens because again, that won't look like or right or vice versa. So you tr want to try to match the focal length. And the third thing is angle. If you're shooting up, try to get a sky that looks like it was shot up. Don't pick a sky that looks like it was shot along the horizon because it won't look right and vice versa. So you want to try to get the right angle. Now this image is relatively cool. It was shot up and it was a wide angle lens. So we're going to try to find something that looks a little wider, but looks, you know, natural. And as I look, there's a lot of cooler skies here. This one sky 07 seems to check off all those boxes. It seems like it could be a wide angle lens. It looks like the camera was pointed up on this sky 07 and the color temperature looks right. So we're going to just double click on this to choose it. And when I double click on it, we're going to be asked, do you want to open it up as a layer or as a new photo? Now, when you're doing sky replacements, you want to open it up as a layer. So it's going to be on top of this image. So we're going to click add as layer. Now you'll see a problem that you might encounter. In this case, my original image was shot with a Nikon D850, which is a very high resolution camera. So that image is much bigger than this sky. I don't know what the sky was shot in, but we know that it was a lesser resolution camera than the D850. So we got to get the sky to fit, and it's really easy to do with On One. Go up here where it says Move over here in the tool well. Click on that, and then at the tool attributes, you'll have this um, square with arrows. It says Fill Canvas. Simply click on that, and it will automatically resize the sky image to fit the, in this case, the sculpture image that I took. Then click apply when you're ready. And then you've applied that. So now one is on top of the other. The sky is on top of our original image. Now we need it the other way around when we do this. We want our original image on top. 
So all you need to do is go over in the right hand panel where our layers are and click on the composite layer and then simply drag it above the sky layer. So now we have the composite layer on top, the skies below it. So we're ready to go. We're ready to do something to mask out the sky in this original image. And there are several tools in on one to assist you in doing this. There's one tool in particular that is super easy. It's right here. It's called the quick mask tool and the keyboard shortcut is W. Click on that tool and you can see there's some tool attributes along the top. We want to use paint out mode as simple as that and just get a size that's going to you know let you draw a line because that's really all you need to do. So this tool is real easy to use. So all I'm going to do is go over here on the left hand side and I like getting this close to like the stuff I want to keep while painting in the part I want to get rid of. So I want to get rid of the sky so I'm going to get as close to the building as possible. You don't have to but I found that that seems to help and makes it work a little better. So all we're going to do is simply draw around the sculpture and around the building behind the sculpture like this and let go. Now on one's thinking it's going to do its thing and when it's done it's going to add a mask to this layer and the mask will mask out the bad sky and allow in the good sky. So it just takes a second you can see so it's really very easy to do. Now as I look at it there are a little bit of refinements we can make. If we look over here at the left side of the building you can see it's kind of a little ragged around there. Also, I'm not sure it really caught these spots underneath this, this part of the sculpture where the forearms of this sculpture come in. I'm not sure that that is correct there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And I want to click in here just to make sure. So I'm just going to get a brush that just fits in this little space right here. And I'm just going to click once. And just to make sure that that works. So it's going to refine the mask and let's see what it does if it looks any different. And it looks pretty much the same. So it might have did a good job there. But just to make sure I want to make sure that those are the um, actual, you know, it's the actual sky that I added on top or under the image here I should say. And you can see that one wasn't quite right. You see how we have some blue sky in there now? So I'm actually glad I did that. So that looks better. But we have this, um, you can see this, when I did that too, it refined our edge a well around here. Remember it was kind of ragged over here. And as I look around, it looks pretty good. I mean, it looks pretty good. I really can't find much wrong with it um, overall. Now, uh, if I wanted to, let's see, as I look around, Maybe up in here in this knee here. So what we could do is get another tool. This tool right here is called the Refine Brush. Brush. The keyboard shortcut for that is N. Click on that and go up to the keyboard or to the tool attributes and click in Auto. And then what you would do with this, get a brush that will kind of fit around the edge. And then what I'm going to do is stay on the sky side and just kind of overlap a little bit onto our sculpture here and just help refine the edge. You can see how it refined that edge there a little bit. Maybe in here it needs to be a little bit. You can see, yep, made that a little better. Let's come down in here. Yep. So you could go with this and wherever you see that it just looks a little ragged. We have a little bit of a white edge. Tiny bit along the building here. Let's just see if we could refine that just a little bit. Let it think, yep. It looks a little better. Looks pretty good overall though. So what you would do again is take this refine edge and if anything looks a little ragged, you have a tiny little bit of white edge here. Go in auto mode. That's what I found works best. And just kind of paint along the edges and see if you could get the mask to adjust just a little bit and refine itself so it better fits the image. So that looks pretty good. Um, you can see how easy it is to replace a sky with on one. Now, this was probably the easiest example I could find, but I just wanted to dip our toe into the layers module. 
and introduce a couple tools. The quick mask tool that, as you could see, I just drew one basic line and it really came up with a mask that was pretty accurate. And this refine edge brush, which um, does a really good job of just making sure that everything is tight up against your buildings. And in this case, the sculpture itself looks pretty good. When you're all done, you could go back to the browse module and it's going to ask you um, that this file is open, blah, 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 blah. So we want to save it and close it because you, that is one thing you might have noticed in on one. When you go from module to module, you never really have to save anything. Well, in this case, when we went to the layers module, we created a new file, a PSD file, and it, we really have to save it before we leave the module. So click Save and Close. If you want to avoid this dialog box coming up, in the lower right-hand corner, you can see there's a Save button. So you'd want to click that, then leave the module. But we'll click Save and Close. So it's going to save this PSD file, which is our sculpture with the new sky in it. And we're going to end up back in that browse module after it saves it. And then I want to show you that you're actually going to have the two files. You'll have your original raw file, and then you'll have this PSD file. And that's just keeping on one being non-destructive. So you're really never modifying your raw file directly. Your Any edits you do in the develop module or the effects module get written to... Um, the on one database and not directly to the raw file and then when you go into layers you'll create a whole new file which will have the new layer put on it so to show that I'll go to the grid view and here's our original image in the lower right hand corner and here's our new file right here and you can see that's a copy.psd file we'll double click on that and there it is so that's how you replace a sky easy version in, in an image using layers in On One Photo Raw 2018. Now we have a lot more to do in layers and we're going to do some uh, more, more difficult sky replacements in future videos. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.